Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lisa Bug Mind Body Blend. We're in October 2024, still recovering from hip replacement. So um, my doc has been telling me to slow down a bit. So I'm going to be using the chair quite a bit, but that doesn't mean you need to sit in the chair to do your exercises. All right. I want you to take this where you are today in your body. But if you want to join me sitting, that's okay too. I have a couple different pairs of hand weights and my chair. I'm not really going to be going down and up off the floor much. I'm going to make one adjustment to the ground toward the last half of class and we'll focus on some upper body there. So what I want to do to start today, and I'm going to come into my chair and I'm going to face sideways, is we're going to focus on shoulder girdle protraction and retraction. So what I want you to do is just take your arms out in front of you and then round your back forward. So you're separating your shoulder blades. And then I want you to do the complete opposite of that. So pull your shoulder blades back and try to squeeze them together and make sure you're not hunching up when you do that. So we'll do shoulder girdle protraction, separate your shoulder blades and then retraction and pull back. Now your arms don't have to be here to do this, right? It's not about your arms. You can even do this here, protraction and retraction. And we'll just do two more of those. I want you to get the feel of it. And one more, protract and retract. Relax those arms. And again, you can be standing up. You don't have to sit for this. So then we're going to do that same thing, protraction and retraction with some different positions of the arms, which will add to weights in just a bit. So let's come to our W arms and we'll protract the shoulder blades. So we're opening up the back and then retract and really pull back, firing those muscles of the upper back and protract and retract. Now range of motion is all up to you. When you protract, you can bring your arms in really close and then retract and exhale and inhale. Two more. Open up the shoulder blades and retract. Now keep this retraction. Try not to let your shoulder blades separate. And then we'll take the left hand down to the ground and we're just going to side bend and come up. So I have this shoulder blade back, still have the shoulder blades together as much as I can retract. We're warming up the side waist. Now we could certainly add this arm reaching, but it's really hard to keep your shoulder blade retracted. So just experiment with maybe some different movements here you can do without losing that retraction in the shoulder blade. Just two more on this side. And one more. Good. Both arms up. Let's protract. Retract. Hold. Pull those shoulder blades back. Let this right arm drop. Keep that shoulder blade back, so try not to let it round forward. And then we'll side bend over to the right and up. We're trying to educate those muscles to keep firing, to retract the shoulder blades while we're doing other functional movements. So maybe we try bringing that arm up. So think about the back of your shoulder and upper arm being glued to a wall behind you. And still breathing. Nice. Just checking in on the spine. See how that's feeling. Let's do two more. And one more. Back to both arms up, protract, retract, pull back. And then I want you to rotate this right hand down. So my, my upper arm is just in rotation. And then when that one comes up, rotate the other one down. 
wow, I feel a big difference here in my right arm's ability to rotate down. And that's the one on the left side of your view of me. And I think that's an old shoulder injury I had back in the early 2000s. So I don't want you to feel any pain. Make sure those shoulder blades are still retracted. And you guys all know with Lisa Bug classes, if these, if you can't do these movements or if it's uncomfortable, then you modify. Good. And let's do one more of these on each arm. Then come back up to your W arms, protract, retract. Now, can we stay retracted as we rotate? So I really want to pull the right shoulder back, but at the same time, the left one is still grounded. And then we'll go the other way. I don't know about you, but my shoulders are starting to get tired. So could we still do this with the arms in front? That would be hard to keep your shoulder blades retracted if your arms are in front of your body, but you can certainly give that a try. I'm going to lower them down, keep my shoulder blades back as I twist side to side. Zipping up the abs, going through your range of motion, one more each direction. Come back to center, protract, and retract. Now we're going to flex at the hip while we keep this uh, retraction back. So I'm going to hinge forward, and I'm not rounding my back, and pull up. So if you're standing on your feet, you can soften your knees. It's like you're doing a little baby deadlift, and pull it up. Lengthen through the crown of the head. And then tip and hold this. We're going to add our twist from here. So start to rotate. And then rotate the other direction. Are those muscles still firing in the upper back? And you know what I'm feeling also is a really nice stretch across the fronts of the shoulders since I'm in that retraction. The amount that you're hinged forward is all up to you. If you have low back problems, it can be small. One more each direction. Back to center. Back up. We'll protract. Retract, and then relax your arms. Give them a couple shoulder rolls. Woo! I don't know how about that felt for you, but it was when you're really intentional on it, there's a lot of muscle activation. Okay, I'd like you to find one large hand weight, something that you can do a bicep curl with. And since I'm sitting in the chair, I want to make sure my arm is hanging long off the chair. So again, either standing, seated, you can be doing balance movements, whatever you want to put in here. And we're going to retract this left shoulder blade back and take a side bend and then come up and do a bicep curl. Now, another thing you can do with this free hand is you can put it on your hip and retract back that way. And if you're standing, I want to be sure that you feel equal body weight on into both feet. And what I'm doing sitting in the chair is I'm making sure that I have both sitting bones down and I'm not rocking over onto my right hip when I do that side bend. You can do a palm up bicep curl, or you can also do the hammer style curl where we have the palm in. So we're using this QL muscle in the side obliques to side bend, and then we're activating the bicep. Let's 
get two more. Going at a nice controlled pace. And one more. Lower that arm down. Switch to the other hand. Retract the shoulder blade back so we can bring this arm here. We can place it on the hip as long as you don't allow this to rotate forward. I'm going to come to the edge of the chair a little bit more over here. Side bend, pull up and bicep curl. Good. I just had to re-retract my shoulder blades. I could feel them coming apart. When we start to get fatigued, we begin to resort to old habits. They come back very easily. And it happens also when we disconnect our brain and our body. So with mind body blend, we always want to be conscious and concentrating. So a nice blend of stretching the side waist and strengthening it firing that bicep and then activating the shoulder blades in back. You're inhaling into the side stretch, exhaling to bring it up. Check in to make sure you've got equal weight distribution, either both feet or both sitting bones. Three, two, and one relax that arm down okay if you're still good with that weight i want you to take both of them didn't have those as close as i needed to so now we're going to side bend alternating sides but do both arms in the bicep curl so we'll take it over to the right oops we need to retract our shoulder blades but you already did didn't you yes okay side stretch and then both arms will curl. Side stretch. Both arms will curl. And again, you can do that rotating curl. You can do palms facing in. You can even do palms facing the floor, which is really challenging. It's that reverse bicep curl. If you've never tried one, give it a go, because I just want you to see how different it is. When we have our palms down, that's called pronation. And that kind of kicks out one of the bicep muscles. And it, it's not working much anymore when our palms are down. So this is challenging. Excellent. Let's do two more each direction. Nice. Re-retract those shoulder blades. One more each direction. And curl. And relax down. So we are going to hinge forward with a nice straight back. Arms are down, and again, if you're standing, you're in a little bit of a deadlift. And we'll pull both elbows back, retract the shoulder blades, and then when you bring your arms forward, try not to protract. So they're gonna be retracted more when we're here than when we're here, but we're not gonna allow them to protract forward. So retracted, retract more, and then release. Nice job. Let's get five more of these. Pulling back. Adjust weights if you need to at any time or no weights at all. Three. Good neutral head position. I shouldn't look up at the screen because that puts my neck out of alignment. One more. And then we'll come up to take a short break, adding singles with a rotation. 
So I'm just going to stand up for just a second to show you if you're on your feet, you're right like this doing this exercise. We're in the chair, we're toward the front edge of the chair and we're hinged forward. Retract your shoulder blades, pull the right arm and twist. So you'll notice this other weight is going down more toward the floor. And then as the right arm's coming down, the left arm is pulling. And twist. So unless it makes you feel dizzy, take your head with you and really look over that shoulder. Two more each way. This is starting to feel really challenging with my eight pounders, but it's doable. One more each way. Back to center and come on up, rotate. Okay, you can keep your weights if you want to. This is a balance position. I'm gonna set mine down. If you need a wall to hold on to, we're going to do single leg stance. I wanna have my clock in front of me too so I can see my timer. Okay, so single leg stance. I'm just gonna do this on my good side and then I'm gonna sit down and let you do it on the other one. So this is my good hip, so I'm gonna stand on my right foot. Abdominals engaged, retract your shoulder blades, arms in any position, and let's lift that right knee up. So 30 seconds without setting the foot down is our goal, but if you need to tap it, that's okay, or lightly set your toe on the ground. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, I'm gonna have a seat. Get ready on the other side, so shift your body weight into the other foot, draw your shoulder blades back, stand tall, and begin. 30 seconds. So the surface that you're standing on can make a difference in your balance. If you have carpeting, it's going to be a little bit harder than if you have a hardwood floor. So being on a stable surface really does help with that. Okay, you have 10 seconds to go. Good. And five, four, three, two, and one, and relax. Good, back to these heavy weights. Standing, seated, wherever you wanna be. We're gonna do our side bend with a bicep curl. Then I'm gonna add a little push forward with the weights. You don't have to go far to add a little bit of extra shoulder movement and try not to lose your retraction. So let's retract. We're going to side bend to the right. Bicep curl both arms and then reach them toward me a little bit. And then come down, side bend the other side, keep the shoulder blades retracted, bicep curl, and reach them out a little bit. Nice, so that reach forward is, is a little bit difficult with heavier weights, so if you just wanna go an inch, that's fine, you're getting shoulder flexion. You can leave out that press forward, that's fine. But the goal is to keep the shoulder blades back when we're doing the push forward. So if you're standing up, another nice thing to add is on the bicep curl or the push forward, do a little squat. Or you can do a mini squat through the whole exercise. So you're doing isometrics for your legs Nice. Let's do one more of these on each side. Good, last time to the left side bend. Bicep, push forward and relax. Soft knees, hinge, Pull the right arm back, rotate, 
and then switch. So now, instead of moving your head the same direction that your body's moving, I want you to keep your head in a neutral position and don't move your head. And we've mentioned this before, this actually gives you more neck mobility to do it this way because your shoulders are rotating and your neck isn't, so your head is actually in a different place. But it seems a little counterintuitive. We check those shoulder blades back. Two more each side. One more each side. And release it and come up. Set those weights down. Next balance pose is a side leg raise. And I wanna do a few repetitions before we hold it. So again, I'm just gonna do this on my good hip. So I want you to point one toe out to the side. If you need to hold onto a chair wall, that's great. Retract your shoulder blades. And we're going to activate the side hip and lift and lower. Lift and lower. Now, when you lift, try not to tip. If you tip, it's actually this leg that's moving. And we want to keep this one right underneath us and let the free leg lift. Good, you can do anything you want with weights here also. Now let's get ready to balance for 30 seconds by lifting that leg up any amount, retracting your shoulder blades, doing whatever you want with your arms here. Nice. Strong core. Make your body feel taller. Find a focal point. Good job. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good, nice job moving those arms, Linda. I could see that. That makes it more challenging, right? Okay, so let's do the other side. And I'm gonna sit down. You're gonna point your toe out to the side. I'll use my arm as an example, and let's lift and lower that other leg to the side. And try not to change the orientation of your body by tipping. And this doesn't have to be big, and you're squeezing on the outside of that hip. If you want to add some arm work, great. Okay, let's get ready to hold our balance. Bring it up, hold that leg out. Anything you wanna do with your arms, but I want your shoulder blades retracted. 30 seconds. Scoop the abs in. Breathing. Great job, 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, and one, and relax. Okay, I wanna add on to our side bend bicep curl push movement. I'm gonna have you push a little bit further up if it's okay for your shoulders. And if it's not, you can push forward or you can leave the push out again. So gathering the weights that seems like it's gonna be okay for you, let's retract shoulder blades. So we side. We bicep curl, we push either forward or up any amount, and you don't have to go till your arms are all the way straight. Side bend, bicep curl, push on any angle. Good, just take these at your own pace. Nice. So once you get the exercise flow that's going to work for your body, then I want you to go back to being mindful of retracting your shoulder blades. Good. 
I used to think that it was the holy grail to be able to go all the way up like that. And it really is not so much because actually I feel like it's a little bit more challenging to only go right about to here. I feel the muscles are working more than when I'm getting my arms all the way up and straight. So I've been kind of experimenting with that a little bit. Nice. We'll do one more on each side, right and left, with your choice of a push. Finishing on that left side. And down. Okay, we have one more set of our hinge forward with rotation, but this time we're going to turn our head the opposite direction of the way our arm's going. So we get in our hinge. If we're pulling our right arm up, we're looking to the left. And then as we're pulling our left arm up, we're looking to the right. So each of these sets, we've done something different with the head. We've taken it with us, which doesn't give us much in the way of neck movement or mobility. We've kept it in place, which gives us more neck mobility. And then we've turned it the opposite way, which gives us even more neck mobility. Now, sometimes when we turn our head, we just think about turning our head. I want you to think about turning your eyes even further than your head is turning. So I want you to look way over in the corner of your eye. And let's do two more each side. Retract your shoulder blades. And then come back to center and rise. Okay, our next balance pose is our warrior three. I'm going to use my chair here to have it out in front of me. And again, I'm just going to do one leg and then sit down. You're going to do the other one. So I'm going to stand on my right leg, which is the good hip. We're going to tap the left leg behind. And then we'll hinge forward until we have our shoulders nice and level and retracted. Now, if you want, you can take just the right hand off. So it's like you're in your bird dog and hold that for balance, or you can try taking both hands off. So get ready. I'll time you 30 seconds beginning now. I'm coming on down because I even felt that on my good hip today. So really trying to be very cautious of letting those hips heal. Good. Now you're thinking about having your shoulders level across, your hips level across. Your leg doesn't have to be at any specific height. 10 seconds. Good. Five, four, three, two, and come up and rest. Okay, so now standing on the opposite leg. Take a breath, lengthen your spine. Shift forward, maybe both hands are lightly touching or the opposite hand from the free leg can lift up like our bird dog or both hands can lift up. Get ready to start in three, two, and begin. 30 seconds. Now, can you retract your shoulder blades without losing your balance, engaging your abdominal muscles without losing your balance, and then trying to keep a neutral head gazing out on the floor somewhere to help you with your balance. 10 seconds. We're not holding the breath. We're breathing. Five, four, three, two, and one. Relax. Great. Okay, we are coming down to the mat, so I'm just going to make one adjustment to come to the floor. And I want you to have your weights close by. We're going to be doing a fair amount of chest work 
And we're gonna practice that shoulder retraction, which is a little bit different down on the ground. So I'm gonna have my eights and my fives with me. All right, let's see how we wanna do this, Lisa. <clears throat> Okay, so once we get down onto our back, we're going to take the size of weight that we feel like will work for arm presses, and we'll take them right up to the ceiling. So if we protract here, we're going to use our chest muscles a little bit. So glue your shoulder blades back into the floor, and then without doing anything but keeping your arms straight, I want you to peel the back of your shoulders off the floor by pushing your weights up and then bring your, your shoulder blades back down. So push them up and bring them back down. So this seems a little bit counterintuitive to what we've been doing because we've been working on retracting so much. But when we're on our back and we protract, we are working some good muscles here in the chest. This helps with our pushing. So let's do one more. And then we'll bend the elbows right next to the sides of the body. Your elbows are at about a 90. And then as you push up, protract and try to lift the back of your shoulders off the mat. And you'll feel this fires your pecs, your chest. Now, right now, I'm doing a direct line from the floor to the ceiling. But we could also do a little bit different plane. So next time we come up and protract, I want you to bring the weights to touch. This is the top of an A. And then as we lower the elbows down, take them wider out onto the floor. This is called the A press. So elbows wide and then protract and touch the weights if you can or pretty close together. I've got my weights here in my way. There we go. So we bring elbows wide and then we protract and try to lift the back of the shoulder blades off the floor. Now for lower body, I always give you lots of options. You could do this in a bridge. You could do this knees in table. You could add some single leg extensions. But for me today, I'm not going to move my hips at all. I'm just going to stay right down on the floor. So now that we have this movement, I want you to press one of them up and protract. And as that one's coming down, you'll do the other side. So when the right arm is up, the back of your right shoulder is going to be off the mat. The weight isn't crossing the midline, so we're not coming over here. We're going straight up, but we're picking up the back of your shoulder off the mat. Rotating side to side. Let's get four more. Three each side. Two more each side. And one more each side. Pick up that shoulder. and then relax. We can set the weights down. Fingertips are going to come behind the head, slightly retracting the shoulder blades, or you can hold a kitchen towel behind the back of your head. And then we're just going to keep our elbows out to the side and pick our sternum up toward the ceiling for a little small crunch here, and then come down. A crunch, and come down. So now we're not protracting at all. We're keeping those shoulder blades slightly retracted or at least in neutral. Two 
two more. And one more. Now, if your neck is really starting to get tired, at each repetition, let your head completely come to the mat and relax those neck muscles. Okay, so let's do this side to side now, keeping the shoulder blades retracted. We'll lift up and lift the right shoulder off the mat. So that's allowing your body to turn. Set it down, lift your left shoulder off the mat. And try not to protract through your upper body. Good. Make any adjustments for shoulder issues here. I want this to feel comfortable. Keep your hips nice and level on the floor. And again, adding anything you'd like with tabletop or you can bring the opposite knee in toward you. I'll do it on my good hip, but not on the bad. I shouldn't say bad. It's not bad. It just needs more time. Okay, one more on each side. Great. Okay, so we're going to do that set of core work with the option of adding your weights. And again, not necessary if you don't want to. So we're going to hold them here with the elbows bent a little bit. Keep your shoulder blades retracted back and then lift and lower. You can keep your elbows bent the same amount throughout, or you can press up and down also, but try not to protract too much. So it's not like that first one we did when we protracted the shoulder blades. Now your neck's gonna wear out quicker because we're not supporting it here. And four more. Exhale. And three, you should feel shoulders and triceps working if you have substantial weight and your pecs too. One, short break, relax. Then with our rotation, we're going to press that arm slightly up toward the ceiling. So if we start here, as we pick our right shoulder off, we're going to press that weight up but try not to protract your shoulder blade. Is that too much to think about? Because it almost is for me today, but it's a good goal to try. And I want you to initiate this from your core. So try not to think about push the arm, lift the shoulder up. Think about it the other way. Lift the shoulder up, push the arm. So let your core start this or at least simultaneously. Two more on each side. Rest your head, relax at each time. One more each side. And then your weights are down. So now we did an exercise in our warm up where we had our elbows and in our goal post position. And one hand went down and then the other one. So I want you to just practice this on the mat. And many of you are going to say, I'm not adding weight for this today. That's going to be too much. So maybe some pretty lightweight if you want to try it with weights. So I'm going to grab my lighter ones here. So our elbows are down. Our arms are bent about 90 degrees. And as one arm goes down, the other one rotates up. So basically, you're working opposing muscle groups on each arm. Lots going on here in the rotator cuff. Now, with our elbows on the floor, it's not quite as intense if we try to lift our arms off the floor a little bit, but be careful, make sure that you can do that because that's going to change it quite a bit. 
but I'm going to suspend my arms off the ground a little bit as I rotate this side to side. And again, without weight is great too because you're just working some good range of motion in that shoulder joint. Let's do two more each direction. One more each direction. Then both back up and then relax and rest. Okay, isolating our triceps without moving our shoulders. We'll do some tricep extensions here on our back. So lighter weight again, not real heavy. You want to take both arms up from the shoulder. Make sure they're not over your head. So drop them down a little bit. And then at the same time, just bend both elbows so the weights just skim right next to your ears. And then press up. Down toward the ears. And press up. Any options with lower body you'd like to add? You know, I do have a bridge as part of my PT, and Dr. Mayer said I could do those exercises. So I'm just going to come up into a little small bridge. I'll do maybe four of these in bridge, and then I'm going to come down. Great. All right. Let's take a short break. And then we're going to do alternating arms, but they're going to move past each other. So not one at a time, but just switching, switching. So if we start with the right elbow bent, it's next to the ear. Then as we push that one up, the left one comes down. Good. This is a nice wrist strengthener too. I definitely feel a little bit of a challenge in my wrist to keep them straight when I'm holding on. I have five pounders for this. I'm definitely feeling that work. Two more on each arm. One more each. And both straight up and both down. Okay, so this is a, called a lat pullover. I want you to touch your weights together, bring them up, and then we're going to bring them above the head any amount. So your elbows are staying bent just a little bit and your shoulder is moving now. We're not coming clear down like this because then we get a little bit more involved in the shoulder, in the front of the shoulder. So I just want you to come up to neutral or even shy of that a little bit. So we have some work in the lats throughout the whole exercise. Now, when the arms come over the head, your low back starts to lift up. Then reduce your range of motion a little bit and try to imprint your low back down into the floor to activate your abs. You can also add that little bit of an abdominal curl as the arms come up, curl head and shoulders up, and then back over into your pullover. If you have two weights and they're the lightest that you have and it's getting too heavy, just set one down and hold on to both ends of one weight and see if that helps you manage the resistance. Now, since we did tricep extensions right before this, we kind of pre-exhausted the triceps. So even though this is mostly a lat exercise, you should feel the triceps as well, especially because we're keeping the elbows bent a certain amount, which keeps those triceps firing isometrically. Three more. You can add single leg extensions if you like. Two more. One more. And 
and relax, setting that weight off to the side. Okay, let's work the back into a little bit of extension, and this is going to help us with retracting our shoulder blades too. So roll over onto your front side. Let's see. Right hip is the easiest one to roll. And come all the way down on your belly. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of a blanket under my forehead so I, I have room for my nose to breathe, but I can keep my head straight. You can also stack your hands under your forehead, but I want you to think about retracting your shoulder blades. So if you can do it like this, it's going to be optimal. So try to push the top of your feet firmly into the ground, tightening up your leg muscles and slightly fire your backside muscles. Then lift your hands off the ground and just retract your shoulder blades and then bring them back down. You could do this with very light weights, but I feel it plenty without holding on to any weight. So then of course we wanna add some back extension with this. So we'll retract first, then we'll lift our chest up Second, we'll lower the chest down and then we'll release the hands to the floor. So retract, lift, lower, and release. Woo! After my arms are tired from our weight training, boy, this seems really challenging to retract now. Now you can also lift one leg up. So we'll retract. As we lift the chest, we'll lift one leg up, come down and release. Then the other side, retract, lift the chest and the leg, down and release. You can also lift both legs. Retract, chest and the legs come up, down and release. And these are things that I am allowed to do with PT. Just a small little glute, glute leg raise. And up. Now, if you'd like to make it a little bit more challenging, hold this retraction and just lift and lower without releasing the retraction. Five. Four, three, two, one, and relax down. Okay, we're going to come up to hands and knees, all fours. We're just gonna do our cat and cow with one more little set of retraction and protraction. So your hands are on the mat. If we retract, we let our chest sink down and we pull our shoulder blades together and we can tip our tailbone up and let your chin slide forward. This is cow. And then protract and push up, tuck your tailbone, tuck your chin and open up your shoulder blades. With the breath, we take an inhale as we drop the belly down and retract the shoulder blades. Exhale as we press up. Three more. Two more. And one more. Find your nice neutral spine. We're going to make our way back to our feet, or I'm gonna come back to my chair so we can tuck the toes, we can walk hands to feet, feet to hands. Take your time. You can also just sit on the mat if you'd like as we finish our class with a little bit of flexibility, you know for the upper body that we worked 
quite a bit, specifically the shoulders and the triceps. So let's take a breath in, open, slightly retract. And then as you breathe out, we'll wrap this right arm in front of our body and gently guide it in. Then turn your head to the right and look over that shoulder. Feel a little stretch in the side of the neck. You can also wrap this into your eagle arms. Good. Unravel. Inhale. Open. Retract. Exhale. Left arm comes across. Looking left. And maybe wrapping an eagle. Try to keep that shoulder blade pressed down and stretch the right side of your neck. And back to the front, inhale, open, retract. Keep this retracted as we lift the right arm up and then try to touch the back of your shoulder blades. Then we can use this hand to either push forward from here or we can rotate it like we did in a couple of our exercises and bring it behind the back. Just a little cow face. Inward rotation of the left shoulder tricep stretch on the right arm. Good. The bottom arm comes out. Gently come back down. Retract. Pull back. Left arm lifts. We try to reach back behind our shoulder blade. This opposite hand can press. It can come from the back or you can slide it behind into your cow face. And standing or sitting tall through your spine. And bring the bottom arm out first. And then the top, come back to your retraction. And then we'll just straighten the arms a little bit. Turn your palms up behind you and push back and up. Then drop your chin slightly down to your chest. Bring your chin back to neutral and we'll take three nice big arm circles coming forward. Up, open, retracting, and around. Two more, breathe in. Back and around. One more, breathe in. Open. And around. Relaxing those arms, just tip your right ear to the right shoulder for one more little neck stretch. Sometimes we get so tense here, especially when we're doing weight training and a lot of activating those shoulders and upper trapezius, and tip your head the opposite way. And back to neutral. Let's stretch one more time. Nice big reach up, full body reach. Press the palms, and everyone said, ah. You are done. All right. I hope you can stay on for a chit chat. I'll get Jitsi off and then we can discuss. Discuss and debate and uh, a little debrief. Okay. Stop recording.